gandang gabi po. Muli po tayo po ngayon ay uh, narako na naman sa ating pong midweek Bible study. Thanking God for this opportunity that He hath given us para po tayo makapag-aaral ng salita ng Panginoon. Mga ah, kapatid, ang blitz po ng panahon, Agosto na po. We are now getting closer to Christmas, ano ho? First Wednesday of August. So, sa oras pong ito, ilan lang pong quick announcement that this coming Sunday, ang ating pong service, our worship service, our time will be changing. Instead of 9 a.m., our worship service this coming Sunday will start at 9.30 a.m. No. So, 9.30 a.m. ang simula po ng ating worship time. So, huwag po ninyong kalimutan. At I hope na magkita-kita po tayo this coming Sunday. No. So, I think ilan po yung ilan nating mga announcement sa so, oras pong ito. Tayo po idarako na sa ating pong prayer time. Tayo po yung So, tonight, let's come to God. And let us pray. Tikilang Diyos, oras pong ito. Lumalapit po kami, Panginoon. Bringing tonight every petitions we have in our heart. Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon, sa pagkakataong binigay mo for us to pray. Tonight, your Heavenly Father, I'm bringing to you every prayer request that we have in our hearts. Man kami, Panginoon, mga kapatid, na humihingi ng prayer request. They apply for work. I pray to help me, Father, that in your own time, Lord, give the desires of their heart. Ang ilan sa kanila, Panginoon, sa oras na ito'y dumaraan sa karamdaman. Lord, I pray that you will continue to heal and touch them. Sa oras na ito, dakilang Diyos, I pray for your continued healing. For those who are sick and continued health, kalusugan sa ilan namin mga kaibigan at mga kapatid. I pray for Ernesto Bivit, Cheryl Sebastian, Feli Munoz, Virgilio Ruedas, Malu Contawe, Miggy Victoria, Rika Gafni, Nancy Arceo, Larry Cahucom, Peter Manares, Apple David, Aurora Fernandez, Ana Flores. I also pray for Tatay Felix Ligaya, Lovie Ligaya, Cornelia Concepcion, Joy Castro, as well as and God. I pray, Panginoon, Ikaw, Panginoon, patuloy na humipok ng pagkaling sa may mga karamdaman, kalusugan, Panginoon, sa nangangailangan ng health. I pray, Your Heavenly Father, that You will be with me. Ngayon, Panginoon, inilalapit ko rin ang isang prayer request His name is Mac Harold Mari, who is in the hospital sa Bataan, sa Philippines. He's suffering with COVID. Kaloyding siya mami po sa kanya. So, I just need to help him in all of his health. Pagaling. 
Pagniniwala kami, Panginoon, that you are an answering God. We pray for salvation of Aaron Filiana, Rico Kahukum, and Jean Badayas, Rika and David Gaffney, Elmer and Loretta Villanueva. Noah Panginoon, this precious soul come to know you as the Lord and personal Savior. We pray to Heavenly Father for a spiritual growth, for a nested awareness as well as Michelle and Andy Martinez. We pray for the churches that we are supporting back in the Philippines. Kamitin mo Panginoon ang bawat kong gagawa upang marami pang makakilala sa iyo bilang Panginoon at ang Panginoon. Lord, sa oras na ito, patuloy ko namin yung pinapasalamatan. We continue to lift you, Panginoon, sa aming buhay. We are trusting what you can do that we cannot do for ourselves. Katagpuin mo na, Panginoon, ang bawat prayer request nito. Say the kilang Dios and kalwalatian. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Gandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. This is Pastor Jesse Ligaya. Umabati po ng magandang Wednesday. Wednesday night. <coughs> At uh, sa oras po nito, tayo po ay darako sa ating pong pag-aaral ng salita ng Panginoon. At uh, kanina po ay uh, we come to God and pray. Tinalap po natin yung mga kabigatan, petitions we have in our hearts. We believe that God do answer His prayer in the home. Sa oras po nito, gusto ko pong pag-aralan po natin from the book of Romans. Isa po sa simulat po ni Apostle Paul. At uh, babasahin ko po as our text for tonight. Ito po yung text na atin po babasahin. Dalawang talata po. Two verses. So I would like us to uh, get for our text for tonight. Sa book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. At uh, titignan po natin ano ho, itong dalawang talatang ito and then from there we will move on sa ating pong study. Ang sabi po sa verse number 16, the book of Romans, chapter 1. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Let us pray. Let's come to God and pray. Your Heavenly Father, tonight we are thankful for this opportunity that you have given us for us to come study your word. Lord, bless this study that it will steer that it will enlighten and help us grow in our spiritual life. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for the privilege that you have given us tonight to study as well as to pray. Lord, everything that we have brought to you in prayer, we are asking that you will give it in accordance to your will. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So, oras po ito, sa ating pong pag-aaral, mapapansin po natin na uh, one of the uh, practical book na inyo pong babasahin. I believe that the book of Romans is one of those. As Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul approached writing one of this letter. Now, we know that the place of writing of Apostle Paul happened in Corinth. It is evident in the greetings to Gaius, if you remember, who live in Corinth, doon po siya nakatira. And we will see that in the book of Romans chapter 6, in particular verse 23rd, as well as book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 14. And then at the same time, in Arustus, who had been settled down there in Corinth. And we will see that also in the same chapter, the book of Romans, chapter 16, and then 2 Timothy, chapter 4, and verse number 20. At uh, siguro po, isa pa rin po uh, to support that the book of Romans was written in the place of Corinth was a person by the name of Phoebe who apparently accompanied the epistle in Romans chapter 16 verses 1 and 2 and um, he was from the church of Censoria, a suburb place in Corinth. They said that probably the book of Romans were written in 57 to 58 AD while Paul was in his third missionary journey in the book of Acts chapter 20 verses 1 to verse number 3. Now, siguro po isang bagay na makikita po natin dito at uh, it could be uh, probably one of the questions that we will ask ourselves. Paano nag-spread out ang Christianity, ang churches in the place of Rome? In fact, kung pag-aaralan po natin, wala pong detailed revelation in the New Testament how the churches in Rome spread paano sila nagkaroon ng mga Christian churches in the place of Rome but there are a few things that we can consider the probability why or how the churches and Christianity spread out in Rome. And one of those is those people who visited Jerusalem. If you remember in the book of Acts where the ministry of the Holy Spirit started in Acts 1, chapter 1, and chapter 2, and Makita po natin that after that day of Pentecost, in the earlier part of the book of Acts, we know that there are people who get saved and it's being added to the churches. Marami pong mga mananong palataya during the time na nakakilala sa Panginoon. And it could be that one of the probability that the church or the churches in Rome spread and grew by the numbers could be the probability that those who visited Jerusalem during the time that the Pentecost happened when they came back to their original place which was in Rome. Um, these people might be one of those who accepted the Lord Jesus Christ 
they are part of those 3,000 people who got saved by the gospel of Christ. In the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse number 10. Or, sinasabi naman po ng iba, it could be probably those who were removed, who were dispersed. Because there are Christians, if you remember, uh, one of the uh, first martyr in the scripture, which was Stephen. He was stoned to death. And history said that Paul is part of that. In fact, during the time he was being called a soul. Not until he received the Lord Jesus Christ and his name was changed to Paul. And when they left the place, some of them probably, they said, went to Rome. And then when they reached the place of Rome, since they have the gospel, the message of salvation, these people started preaching and reaching those people for Christ. In the book of Acts chapter 8, from verses 1 to verse number 4. And it was said that those first Christians from Rome, possibly that of Aquila and Priscilla, if you remember those Christians by the name of Aquila and Priscilla along with all the Jews were expelled from Rome and Paul found them at Corinth during his second journey in the book of Acts chapter 18 from verses 1 and verse number 2 after traveling with Paul to Ephesus and working with the church there according to Acts 18 verse 18 to 19 and also chapter uh, I should say 1st Corinthians chapter 16 and verse number 19 we will find that they went back to Rome and then they started to host their home as a home church so hindi na pala bago ano? uh, maging sa time natin madalas sa Pilipinas I remember the first time I handled the uh, local church in Pasig. The church started from a home church, Bahay. Uh, not only that, but also I remember when uh, Nana Imeli was starting to pioneer a church in Marahan Alfonso Cavite. I vividly remember that time when they were starting the church they started it from a home church so they, they put up a Bible study and then those people who got saved they offered their house to be a house church before they were able to build a building or a local church and it's very interesting, ano ho, ang pagkilos ng Panginoon sa kanyang salita. Because once the Holy Spirit convict the heart of the person, alam po ninyo, nagkakaroon ng transformation, nagkakaroon ng pagbabago sa buhay ng isang tao. And once the Holy Spirit convict the heart of that person and accepted Christ not only that God changed their status quo 
as enemies of Christ. And now they become the children of God. Coming from the family of darkness. Sabi nga ng John, from the Gospel of John, he wrote in chapter 8 and verse 44, Ye, your father, the devil, so during the time that uh, we haven't received the Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts, sabi ng Bible, there is the family of the devil. Now, hindi po ako nagsabi niya, ano po? It is the Bible. Those who haven't received the Lord Jesus Christ, are part of the family of the devil. Kaya po ang tao, hindi natin tinuturuan ng kasalanan. Because, by nature, we become sinners. We inherited that sinful nature. And that is why we become unrighteous. Lahat ng tao, makasalanan po. And that is the need of the gospel. In the book of Romans, it was laid out to us by Apostle Paul that he needs to travel from place to place not to display his eloquence. Hindi ho niya pinapakita yung kanyang galing because Apostle Paul, by background, he was a great lawyer. He is eloquent, intelligent, brilliant. Pero mapapansin po natin, he considered himself as a fool for Christ. Yan ay isang bagay na makikita natin kay Paul. He humbled himself. By the time he received the Lord Jesus Christ into that road to Damascus, when he met God from that particular place, Paul gave his life not only he gave his life but also he let God to use his life there is this sense of commitment that when he received God in his life and only he was transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit, but at the same time, he committed his life to share the gospel to the lost. May kita po natin that the reputations of Christians in Rome was widespread alam po ninyo yung testimony that talked of walk not only they were spreading not only that they were sharing the gospel the good news ibinabahagi po nila sa tao alam po ninyo not only they were talking about the gospel, the death of Christ and his resurrection but at the same time we will see that their testimony mga kapatid were widespread in the place of Rome both their faith according to the book of Romans chapter 1 verse number 8 as well as their obedience in Romans chapter 16 and verse number 19 it was apparent that those people who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ learn to know him because those Christians learn to give their life to God So makikita po natin, ito pong mga mana ng palataya na ito. Kilalang kilala po sila sa Rome. Ganon sila kapopular. 
because of their faith. They kept their faith. They are walking. While they talk about their faith, they walk the faith. In other words, they were showing it to them that they are truly the children of God. Not only that, they are showing their faith by their works. But at the same time, makikita rin po natin mga kapatid, ano, na ito po mga mano ng palataya na Nazarong, ano, in the place of Rome. That they are showing their faith by their walk but also their obedience. Matandaan po ninyo, ano ho, sa buhay natin, mga mana ng palataya, it is impossible for people to see that we are Christians, that we are living for Christ. Nabubuhay tayo para kay Kristo. Kung hindi tayo lalakan sa Kanya. At susunod, Obedience, yung kung sinasabing obedience, pagsunod sa Panginoong Yesu Kristo. Sa buhay po natin mga mano ng palataya, mahalaga po yung testimony, yung paglakad. Pakita po natin here from the book of Romans that this Christians who were in Rome. Their reputation spread out like a fire because of their faith, because of their obedience. And it depends si Apostle Paul. He wrote the book of Romans. What is the purpose of the writing? Ano po yung kadahilanan kung bakit po isinulat ni Apostle Paul ang Book of Romans. Book of Romans. Isa po sa kadahilanan so that Paul could express in this particular book to preach the gospel para po maibahagi po niya ang mabuting balita, the gospel. Makikita po natin yan in the book of Romans chapter 1 from verses 13 to verse number 15. From there, he went to Spain in Romans chapter 15 from verse 22 to 24. At makikita rin po natin dito, ano ho, one of his intention of writing the book of Romans in Romans chapter 15 from verses 28 and verse number 29, it's because Judaism is spreading like a cancer. Which by this false teaching that's happening during the time of Paul, it disrupt the churches in Antioch. Also those churches in Corinth and Galatia. And now, for Paul to prevent the spread of false teaching or apostasy. So he wrote the book of Romans so that it could prevent the spread of this Judaism, this false teaching. Sa pamamagitan po ng kanya pong writing the gospel, 
he wants to clarify things with regards to salvation. Yan po ang isang kadahilanan po dyan. Gusto pong ituro ni Apostle Paul sa liwanag ng salita ng Panginoon in light of God's Word what is salvation? Why do people need to be saved? Bakit kinakailangan according to John that we need to be born again? Tatlong bagay lamang po ang gusto ko pong ibigay sa ating pong may kling pag-aaral. Paul, when he started writing the book of Romans, is so that he could show that sin, yung pong kasalanan, need or the need for salvation. Kasi po ang tao po ay makasalanan. So, the first thing that Paul taught in the book of Romans is that all have sinned. No one is righteous. We come short of the glory of God. Ika nga po ng marami, we miss the target because we have sinned against God. And because of sin, that's how Paul laid out the need for salvation. In Romans chapter 1 from verses 18, up to chapter 2 of verse number 16 as well from the book of Romans chapter 2 from verses 17 up to chapter 3 and verse number 8 in this chapters and verses that I have mentioned Paul reached out not only to the Jew only to the Jewish people to give to them the gospel of Christ but as well to the Gentiles kaya po alam po natin si Paul became the apostle to the Gentiles Paul became part of the apostle of Christ And one of the things that Paul was doing was to preach the gospel both to the Jews and to the Gentiles. And with that, according to Romans chapter 3 from verses 9 to verse number 20, that they need salvation. Kailangan po ng tao ng kaligtasan. Kaya po ang Book of Romans nasulat so that he could lay out the truth about our standing before God. Na lahat po ng tao ay makasalanan sa harap ng Diyos. Kaibigan sa oras na ito. We are counted sinner before God. You are counted sinner before God. Not until such time you receive the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. Na aminin mo ikay makasalanan, that you need to repent of your sins, and to allow and accept the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, you will never be saved. Because the truth and the reality is this. Salvation is not mere religion. When I talk about religion, 
it means denomination. People thought that being a member of a certain denomination that that will save you. No. Some people thought that salvation is doing good deeds. Attending the church, helping the poor, praying, giving. Lampuninyo, that is not the way to salvation. The only way that a person can become the children of God is that person to receive the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. Makilala ng tao ang Panginoong Iso Kristo ng may pananampalataya. At yan po ay itinuwid ni Apostle Paul sa kanyang writing sa Book of Romans. And that's why when you read the Book of Romans, it's so practical because it talks about justification, it talks about sanctification. Justification. And the whole, we are declared righteous before God. So the second point that we will see why Paul wrote the book of Romans is because justification by faith. The provision made for salvation and that is righteousness. Not only so that Paul could tell those sinners that they need Christ, that they need to accept the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. And that's the only time that they will be forgiven of their sins. But because also of justification, justification by faith, this is one of God's demand from us and that is to be righteous. Now, mahirap po natin maabot yan. You know why? Because no one is righteous. Romans chapter 3 from verses 21 to verse number 31 hindi po natin kayang abutin ang demand ng Diyos. We cannot reach God's demand of righteousness. We cannot reach perfection, holiness, sinlessness. And that is why through reading and studying, Paul wrote in the book of Romans that he told us that this righteousness or this justification was given to us. Yung pong ginawa ng Panginoong Isa Cristo in Calvary became His death on the cross became the payment naging kabayaran po sa ating kasalanan. Yung kabanalan ng Panginoong Isa Kristo. Ang siyang nagbigay sa atin bilang isang taong makasalanan upang tayo mapatawad ng Diyos sa ating pagkakasala and we could stand before God righteous. Banal. Every time that God will look at me Every time that God look at you once you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, God is seeing the Lord Jesus Christ. He mediate between us and God. And the reason why we can now come to God is because of what Christ has done for us. He imputed, He gave, He made us righteous before God. 
Would the Lord Jesus Christ forgive us of our sins? He forgave us from our sins from the past to the present up to the future. You know this justification of faith justification by faith is very important. Hindi po natin kayang maligtas kung ang Panginoong Yesu Cristo ay hindi namatay sa Kalbaryo. Hindi po natin kayang lumapit sa Diyos na banal kung hindi ibinigay sa atin ang Panginoong Yesu Cristo ang, kama, ang, ang kabanalan. Kaya po sinulat po niya ang Book of Romans so that we will know that we are now justified by faith. Tayo po'y pinaging banal na sa harap ng Diyos. Kaya po anytime sino man po ang kumilala sa Diyos bilang Panginoon at Ikapaglitas. Now we have the assurance that we will go to heaven. Alam po ninyo, hindi lamang po because of sin, the need for salvation, why the book of Romans were written. Not only because of justification by faith, which is the provision made for salvation and Christ did that for us he imputed that to us but thirdly and last the scope of salvation the scope ang po yung sinakop at nasakop ng kaligtasan alam po ninyo In the book of Romans, chapter 9, from verses 1 through verse number 33, God chooses to save believers. Once na lumapit po tayo sa Diyos, mga kapatid, isang bagay na gagawin sa atin ng Panginoon. Bibigyan niya tayo ng buhay ng walang hanggang. We will become part God's family. Magiging kabahagi na tayo ng pamilya ng Diyos. Kaya po mahalaga po sa atin na maunawaan po natin ang kaligtasan. Dahil yan po ang nagbago ng ating buhay. We now have the assurance of heaven because now those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ we have life eternal. Kay Bigan sa oras na ito nakilala mo na ba ang Panginoon sa iyong puso? Have you accepted Christ in your heart? Is there a time in your life that you say, Lord, I am a sinner. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart and save me. Kung hindi mo pa ginagawa yan, kaibigan sa oras nito, I would like to invite you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ upang makilala mo siya sa gabing ito. If you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, I will guide you to a simple prayer of accepting Christ. And I want you to follow this prayer if you want to receive Christ in your heart. And this is the prayer. To Heavenly Father, I recognize I have sinned against you. Forgive me of all my sins. And tonight, I accept you. 
as my Lord and personal Savior. Save me tonight. Give me the hope of heaven. In Jesus' name. Friend, if you have followed me in that prayer, today is your salvation. My prayer for you is that you will grow in faith in Christ. Lipo ito po si Pastor Jesse Vigaya. Umabaki po ng kanilang kabipo. Ipagpalain tayo ng Panginoon.